Dear children, uh, and now we'll start a new chapter from chemistry. Okay, that is chapter number three. Right. And uh, we have matter in chapter number three. Okay, matter in chapter number three. All right. So um, many times uh, we have uh, discussed about matter. All right. So um, uh, matter is something which has uh, which has mass and uh, occupies space or the volume okay uh, is a matter okay matter is something which occupies space and has volume all right so when you see around when you look around you find so many things there okay some are living things some are non-living things Right, and those which you see around, whether it is living or non-living, they are all made up of materials. Okay, they contain something in them, and they all occupy space, and they all have mass. So they are all matters. Okay, and uh, but still there are some things which we talk about. Okay, which we know are not matters. It's not that everything that we talk about you know, is matter, but there are some things, there are many things which do not occupy space and which do not have the mass, which means they are not matters. Perhaps you know, you must have guessed also which are the things that I am talking about and uh, you know, are not matter, you must be knowing, like sound, okay, sound, you are hearing me, Okay, the sound that I am producing doesn't occupy the space, doesn't have mass. All right, in the same way, electricity. All right, then your TV signal. All right, so many things there like affection. Okay, love that we you know talk about, so that we know. But all those things you know are not matter because they do not occupy space and do not have mass. So from this discussion what we understand is matter is something which has mass and occupy space. Right? That is mass. I mean that is matter. So this matter that I we are going to talk about. Right? So, <coughs> so matter is Something that is something that has mass and occupies space. Okay, and that is matter. Matter is something that has mass and occupies space. So here, what is mass then? What is mass? So mass is the matter contained in an object. Let us see, this is a chalk. So chalk is a matter. Why? Because it has mass and occupies the space. What is mass in it? Mass means the matter contained in it. The materials contained in it. Okay? Is mass. So, matter is something that has mass and occupies the space. There are still some, uh, some things okay, which are not matter. As I told you, those which do not occupy space and do not have mass, like TV signal, right, um, then your affection, sound, electricity, you know, etc. So these are not matter. Right? Now let us talk about characteristics of matter. Characteristics of matter. Characteristics. Right? So characteristics, uh, number one, we have uh, matter occupies space. Matter, matter occupies space. All right, matter occupies space. As I told you, anything uh, that occupies space is matter. Let us say this is a book. So book is a matter because it occupies the space there. 
okay the amount of space occupied by the object is called its volume okay length breadth and volume i mean length breadth and height the total of this okay length breadth and height when you multiply the product is your volume so the length breadth and height is its volume that means this occupies the space the anything okay anything that has length breadth and height so is matter and that length the product of length breadth and height is the what is called volume of that object that means matter occupies space all right for example i'll just show you as given there in the book also i'll show you here uh <coughs> say also uh, there is a as given there in the book also one experiment or one activity that you can also do at your home okay take a glass filled with water as see here this glass is there filled with water all right and water is already matter that we know and the cup which i am holding is also matter see here i have got my uh, what you call your stone small stone is there tied to a thread okay so when i dip this here when i dip this stone into this container filled with water and what you find is that you see the water being completely filled and little bit of water is even spilled okay why because this stone being a matter has occupied this space here all right so this proves that this stone is a matter why because it has occupied this space in this glass containing the water we can you also do this activity activity at your home all right so now to characteristic of matter is uh, <clears throat> matter has mass okay as discussed matter has mass okay that is matter is made up of uh, some materials then okay and uh, uh, there are many things which we can't see okay which we can't see but we can feel okay are also you know, matters like air okay even air even your air is your matter okay so to prove that whether air is a matter or not you can carry out in activity at your home also okay which is also given there in the book so this activity okay this activity you can see which proves that you know even air is a matter because air has mass all right for that what you can do is that you collect some of the materials like you know you have or you need to collect beam balance as one out here beam balance okay uh, we call it the pola okay traditional type so beam balance you can have then you can also have the depleted ball ball okay ball which is uh, free of air inside okay depleted ball right then what you can do is that you need to have your uh, plastic bag okay plastic bag which is to be hung here then some sand so these are the materials you need to collect for this activity then what you do okay uh, you just uh, uh, fill or pump air in this ball you know this your ball which was deflated you pump air in it and you make it now inflated now okay deflated opposite of deflated is inflated because you have pumped air in it all right then what you do you suspend it on one end of this beam balance okay you just suspend it to the one end of this uh uh to this to the to one end of this beam balance then to the other end of this beam balance that is you suspend a plastic bag containing a little bit of sand as for outer okay here you see 
you see a plastic bag being suspended with little amount of sand in it. Then when you suspend it here, both sides here, the ball, inflated ball filled with air, the other side, the plastic bag containing little bit of sand. When you suspend both of these here, what you see is that here you find the inflated ball going downward. Okay, going downward. See here. Because this ball is heavier than the plastic bag containing little bit of sand. Alright, you can see out here. You can make out. Okay, I will not draw out here on the board because it takes time. Because you are, I am very much sure that you are white. You are, you are very much present out there with the, uh, with the book open, especially page number 55. Alright, so that you just have a look at the book yourself there. See, your ball is downward. That has gone down, whereas the other end has been lifted. Which means the ball is heavier in this case. Then what you do? You add some more sand into this bag. You put some more sand into this and try to balance it. Put some more. You just put, you keep adding the sand into this bag till it comes to its balance. Alright? Till it comes to its level. Then what happens after some time? When you add it, the, I mean, when you add some more sand in it, then at the end you find both the ends coming in the label. They are balanced now. So from this activity, what you understand is that air has mass. Air, air has mass because you see when there was no sand, here the ball was heavier than this. But when you added some more you know, sand in it, then only it came in the level. The, the two, I mean, these two ends are balanced. Which means even the air which you can't see has mass which means it also occupies space and has mass so it is a matter okay so your even air is a matter why because it contains you know it contains a mass or it has mass and also occupies space all right okay now we'll see uh, nature of matter Nature of matter. Right? Nature of matter. Nature of matter. Matter is com composed of tiny particles. Right? So now. Matter is composed of tiny particles. Okay, whatever the matters you see, uh, they are all made up of very fine particles, very tiny particles. And these tiny particles are atoms, ions, and molecules. They are atoms, okay, ions, and molecules. All right, atoms, ions, and molecules which we have discussed before also in the other chapters. So atoms, ions and molecules are the tiny particles that compose any matter. Whatever the matters that we talk about are all made up of such tiny particles. They are atoms, ions and molecules. So atoms are the smallest particle. The okay, smallest particle uh, which can or cannot exist independently. Okay, which can or cannot exist independently though they cannot cannot exist independently but they can have every property of that matter okay so i have given you the example of this when we are talking about element compound something like that so even this silver is also a matter right because it is also made up of you know tiny particles like atoms or molecules. Alright, so the smallest particle, the smallest unit, the smallest unit, the smallest unit 
uh, which uh, you know which impact combine together and form the molecules and and finally give the size to that matter all right has every property of that matter okay just take one atom of this and see whether it has the property of this matter or not it has it contains all the properties of that matter okay though it can or cannot exist alone or independently but it possesses every property of that matter all right and these atoms combine together one atom combined with other and then make a group of atoms maybe the atoms of the same type or different types you know make a group of atoms and this group of atoms you know is your molecule that is a group of atoms many atoms of the same type or different types when combined together that cluster of these atoms is your molecule and this molecule can independently exist in the nature okay it can independently exist in the nature okay i'll give you one more example here suppose h is atom of hydrogen all right when i write this two so it is the molecule of hydrogen here only one atom of hydrogen here two atoms of hydrogen making one molecule of hydrogen okay here is a group of atom but there is only one atom okay so both of this can have the you know every character of the hydrogen whatever the property that hydrogen has it can also have even this can have the properties of hydrogen so this small particles this smallest particles actually make a matter okay and uh, as actually you see here this hydrogen and in the same way you see here water so here this is also a molecule this is a molecule of water where you find two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen so combination of this uh, different kinds of atoms together you know is a molecule of water so this way you know the matter is formed okay so you are nature of matter so matter is composed of tiny particles and these tiny particles are the atoms ions and molecules okay so ions means out here the charged particle like you know charged particle as you see here when i write this one okay so this is your i mean you when i write this one see mm, uh when i write uh, this one this is your ion charged particle which has the charge out here okay so this is your 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 what you call it your ion so this smallest particles compose the matter all right whatever the matter it is they are all formed of this tiny particles okay now we'll see uh, particles of matter are constantly moving okay so we though we cannot see that you know that suppose chalk is there matter which is formed of many particles there but the particles in the chalk uh, cannot be seen whether they are moving or not okay so their movement cannot be seen but actually they are always in motion they are moving so which was first proved by robert brown in 1827 okay so how he discovered this let's see here now so he collected some pollen grains pollen grains means that you know um powdery uh, substance you find in the flower okay that you find in the flower uh, which is actually required for the reproduction in the plants okay in the flowering plants such fine particles actually such fine powdery substance substance he collected substance is collected and suspended there in water you see uh, as there in the book also suspended in water and observed under microscope he observed the pollen grains which are there in the water under microscope all right then what he found he found the pollen grains you know rapidly moving there okay the the pollen grains which are there in the water were constantly or rapidly moving so how they were moving was you know 
they were constantly I mean the particles of water because water is a matter formed of particles such particles of water were constantly eating the pollen grains there so that the pollen grains were moving okay so such zigzag movement and they move in zigzag uh, uh, motion okay they show the zigzag motion there so such zigzag movement of the particles of matter you know is known as brownian motion is known as brownian motion brownian motion named after the scientist robert brown because that motion was observed by robert brown uh, in 1827 he was the uh, discoverer of this idea of this thought of this you know fact so in the honor of this uh, scientist the name of the motion also was given as brownian motion so from this what we understand is that particles of matter any matter which you see not moving which is in fact at static position which is not moving but the particles of which that matter is formed you know, actually are moving they are always in the constant motion they are always in the zigzag constant motion and that motion exhibited by all the particles of the matter is called brownian motion okay so today we'll do only this much i hope that you people have understood and i still believe that you are uh, you know constantly in touch with the book and today also what i feel is that you people please go through the portions of the chapter almost just now covered so that you understand uh, uh, you understand a lot okay so thank you very much